All right, bad news for you Jason Garrett fans out there. I'm sure there's some, right? I mean, I'm a fan of the guy. I like the guy. Jerry Jones was just on 105.3 The Fan, and I was just listening to it on the Radio.com Rewind. Uh, and Jerry <laughs> Jerry is the best denier that doesn't deny in, like, the history of the world. So what did Jerry Jones say today on 105.3 The Fan? Glad you asked. Uh, Jerry said that they absolutely have not met with Urban Meyer. Absolutely not. We have not. And then he followed it up with, I'll paraphrase. He basically said, I don't have it verbatim, but I promise I won't mislead you. I'll give you the general gist of what he said. Well, uh, I can confirm that we did not meet with any coaches, any coaches. But the next thing you're going to assume is that that means we're not interested and I don't mean to besmirch those coaches and don't think that we aren't interested because that'd be incorrect. That's basically what he said was, no, we haven't met with Urban Meyer, but uh, I also want to be careful here because I don't want to besmirch anybody that you might be thinking of. And the fact that we haven't met with them doesn't mean we're not interested. So Red Man Walking is still indeed Red Man Walking and Jerry Jones confirmed it this morning, kind of on accident. Nah, we haven't we haven't uh, met with Urban Meyer, but boy, we we respect him and he's a good coach. And don't think that because I said we haven't met with him that we don't want to and we're not interested. So the coaching search is on, and Urban Meyer's a part of it. All facts; those are facts for you out there, which is cool. If you have a different coach that you want to see a, a Mike McCarthy wave getting going, apparently there's something on social I need to watch a little five minute video of Mike McCarthy. So yeah, we'll get to we'll we'll get to start kicking around all these cowboy coach ideas: Ron Rivera and Mike McCarthy and Lincoln Riley and Matt Rule and Urban Meyer and kick them all around because they're all in play right now. Uh, second thing that I want to talk about in today's video is about Dak Prescott. And what I want to ask you is, uh, with Dak Prescott, is what I'm about to show you, are you okay with this? Is this good enough? And let me get my face out of the way. I want to get over here. I'm going to get over here because I'm going to pop this up on your screen for you here. So Dak, when I was touting him as an MVP candidate on this here chart, Dak would have been number one. Or number two, and he was at the very top. What we have here is I didn't want to give you the tough chart this time. I wanted to give you the simplified version from our buddy Ben Baldwin at the Athletic Seattle. What he's done is he's taken your uh, expected points added per play, so how your quarterback contributes to expected points added per play, and your completion percentage over expected. They take how far you threw the ball and blah, 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 and what's the expected completion percentage and what is yours. And so Dak, when I was touting him as an MVP candidate, was right at the top of this. That's why it was actually called the Dakota rankings, because Dakota was the king. But now, Ryan Tannehill holds the crown, ladies and gentlemen. And the question here is, so as you can see here, Tannehill's at the top. Kirk Cousins, Drew Brees, Derek Carr with a sneaky good year. Lamar Jackson. Russell Wilson, Matt Stafford, Dak Prescott, Jimmy Garoppolo, Deshaun Watson, Pat Mahomes, who's been banged up, Matt Ryan, Philip Rivers. So what I want to ask you on this chart, and this obviously is not the end-all, be-all, if you look at it in chart form and you prefer your expected points added over your completion percentage over expected, uh, then Dak looks better. Or he may look better at the other one. But regardless, like if, if you want to say some of those names don't belong, welcome. Welcome to variance. That's how it goes in sports is sometimes guys have a good year. It doesn't mean they're going to be great next year, blah, 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 blah. But if that's what Dak is, instead of a top three to five quarterback, which is what we were dreaming of and which was what we were enjoying when they started with that bad schedule and he was playing great, and if Dak is the eighth best quarterback in the league, you good? Everybody comfy? You could probably flip some of those names around because obviously Mahomes have been banged up and He's still played really well, but he's better than uh, what he's showing in those numbers, of course. Deshaun Watson's better than the 10th best quarterback in the league. But if that's where Dak lives, in the top eight, that cool with you? Where does he have to be for you to be satisfied when you hear the numbers on this contract? And I saw, I forgot who it was. Stomp, stop biting yourself. Stomp, chill out. You're going to eat yourself. We got to go to the vet. She's gnawing right above her butt. 
Might be allergies. Could be something else. But we'll get it figured out. But, yeah, so if Dak is number eight, if that's what he's going to be, he's going to be the eighth best quarterback in the league. You comfortable at thirty-five to forty million dollars a year? Because I do think we're probably past the 32, 32 to thirty-three million spot. Although I'd be cool with that. Stop just because you walk out of my sight doesn't mean I don't know. Don't you bite there? We gotta get you to the vet. Stop. Sup, girl? Come on back. She's back. Ah, uh, because I'm cool with that. And I think I believe that Dak's going to continue to improve because I think he's that sort of guy. He's taken some big strides this year. It almost looks like he's taken some steps back in the last couple of weeks. But he's gotten much better at avoiding the sacks. Uh, he's gotten much better at pushing the ball down the field, at using the middle of the field deep. So I'm a Dak believer. And if where he ranks right now is where he's going to rank, then I say, okay. And I believe that he'll inch his way up. He doesn't have the most natural ability in the league, but he's got enough, and I think that work ethic and who he is will continue to lead him up, up, up. All right, and finally, in this video, I probably should have done a separate video for this. Am I the only one who was cheering for the Eagles last night? Am I the only one who's sending out tank gifts on Twitter? Because uh, what happened last night is the Eagles, the Eagles uh, pulled it out and I'm happy about that because I want the Cowboys to lose and I want the Cowboys to get a draft pick because the way that they're playing right now, I know, I know, and Jerry said it this morning, get in the tournament and you never know. But what about this team through 13 weeks makes you think anything can happen? I, I, how do you see that? They've been healthy. You've been healthier than pretty much everybody you've played. You have a good quarterback. You've got talent. And you're not good. Until the coaching change, I don't see how anything changes. So, I need the Eagles to beat the Cowboys. I need the Eagles to be the ones to make the playoffs. Because do you realize how big the swing is in draft position? Based on if you're the 7-9 and nine NFC East champs, or if you're just the 7-9 and nine team that didn't make the playoffs, the difference will be like 10th or 12th to 21st. And that's assuming you lose. Cowboys might accidentally beat the Seahawks. Look at me, I'm complaining about if they won a playoff game. If they beat the Seahawks, well, now all of a sudden you're like 24. Because you will get smoked the next week. I'm here trying to build a champion. I'm here trying to tank this season out. I'm here cheering for the Eagles. But then... I realized that the Eagles winning got the Giants one step closer to Chase Young, the Ohio State defensive end, because they're not picking a quarterback. So even if the Bengals hold number one, they'll take Joe Burrow. The Giants will then turn around and take Chase Young. And now we got to block Chase Young for the next 10 years. That's not cool. So I don't know. I have mixed emotions about last night's game. I guess I'll just say go Cowboys, and I hope they win the Super Bowl, right? Like that's my ultimate feeling is go Cowboys, win the Super Bowl. It's good for ratings. It's good for the mental health of the Metroplex. Go win the Super Bowl. But how do you draw that up? I dare you in the comments to draw up how the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. Like, well, they're going to really wake up right now. Wake up. Dallas Cowboys on the field. Like, how are they going to? I don't know, man. I don't know. So I'm glad the Eagles won. And currently I want the Eagles to beat the Cowboys when they play. I want the Cowboys to lose to the Rams. And I'm a team tank guy. You guys know that. I'll team tank on you in a heartbeat. You shouldn't be team tanking when your team's going to make the playoffs, though. That's a bad idea. But that's how much they've got to change the coach. And Jerry's even saying that they're going to change the coach. So maybe you should just jump on board and say, yeah, let's go to the playoffs. Let's make a run at it. Jerry's going to fire him anyway. But what if we accidentally win the Super Bowl? And now I'm complaining about winning the Super Bowl? Do you see what a weird place you put me in, Jerry? It's wild. It's wild over here. All right, make sure you're subscribed to the page. Hit the alert button so that you know when a new video goes up. YouTube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. And 1053thefan.com, of course, you can find all the content as it uh, relates to your Cowboys, to your Mavericks, to your Rangers, Stars, FC Dallas. Check out the podcast on the Stars. Spittle and Shippy got you covered. All right. Appreciate you guys uh, stopping by. I'm going to hit you with the wink, and I'm out of here.